and we're live. So this is a new experience for me. I've never attempted to draw uh, on the internet before. I have drawn in public. I'm going to assume this is a similar kind of thing, except maybe not. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, my name is Shay. Um, I go by Monocled Octopus in a lot of places online. Uh, I am a self-taught artist. I've been drawing uh, for most of my life, so probably over 20 years. Uh, I'm 34 now. Um, I live in Alberta, Canada. I have a lot of education, <laughs> um, but none of it's really in fine art. Um, drawing was always something that I did just to keep myself busy and to kind of explore my world and sometimes escape it, which I think is true for a lot of people. And it's something that I've always kind of kept uh, dear to my heart and kind of for myself. Um, recently I have started have started making maps for uh, people who play role-playing games and kind of the style that might go in the beginning of books and I've decided that I'm going to try and do more with that because I'm enjoying it so much. So I've launched a Patreon and I'm going to start live streaming and kind of seeing where this particular journey takes me. Uh, so Today I want to work on the uh, sample sketches that I'm doing for commission. Um, I figure the way I want to handle these live streams is like treating them as just a working space for me. Um, if anyone is familiar with Runehammer's YouTube channel, he does an amazing thing called Cartoons. Um, he's live streaming usually three times a week now, but it used to just be Saturday mornings. And he's basically just hanging out, letting people observe his process while he does what he does. Um, he's far funnier than I am. <laughs> um, so I recommend that you go and just watch one of his sessions. He's just a really, really cool guy and I'm deeply inspired by him. Um, and it's kind of his example that's got me thinking that I might be able to do something similar and work on getting my work done while also sharing the process with other people. So the map that I am working on uh, the sample is a player map that was given to me by a role player in one of the groups that I'm part of. The sample set that we're doing is this four inch square right here. And what we're doing is four samples uh, that give an idea of what level of detail um, he's looking at so he can decide what level of detail he wants for his final map. In order to start this process, he had a rough idea of the map that he wanted, which is really, really handy when you're trying to commission an artist for this kind of thing. Uh, he had created this online using a program, but he wasn't quite as satisfied with it. Um, I can show you an example of the map that he saw that kind of got him interested in my work. And that would be this one, which I'm pretty impressed with, if I do say so myself. Um, and so he's looking more to convert that digital uh, style that he's been working with into something that's got a more hand-drawn look. So he was able to give me a bunch of information about the locations in his map, um, including telling me like what kind of buildings we're looking at for different places that are there. Um, so I've been able to start doing some research on that account and um, figuring out like how to draw the kinds of buildings he's talking about. So for example, we've got a logging camp, so I've been kind of sketching out an idea or two for that. Uh, a Mott and Bailey style keep, trying to decide like what perspective I'm gonna want on the map. A large walled town, a uh, sepulcher. I didn't know what that word actually meant. I'd seen it before, but I'd never looked it up. So that was really cool. Um, and a stronghold here at the bottom. Let's see if I can get my angles right. So we're gonna try and get them situated on the river here and then fill in various levels of the detail that he might be looking for. So with that I'm gonna get started. Um, I can't promise that I'm gonna keep talking a whole bunch. <laughs> I'm uh, quite nervous to be honest. Um, but if you have questions feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, my super amazing Myrna is currently on the chat right now and she will be letting me know if there's questions that come through. Um, when I get better at this, my intention is to actually monitor the chat myself, but it's kind of difficult to pay attention to that while you're also supposed to be looking at your paper. So we're looking at four levels of detail uh, with this map going from very, very basic to increasingly complex. So the first thing I'm going to do is just sketch myself out some shapes. 
Um, I'm not particular about these being identical at this point. I just need a rough place to lay things down and see how they go. It's occurring to me that the shadow of the light is really not working out for this setup with the way that I draw. Hmm, I don't know how to solve that for today. Let me see what I can do here. If I do that, is that any better? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, cool. So I'm just wanting to place the logging camp first. And I'm going with a kind of top-down view of that. When I was researching how to draw these icons, I was really trying to find something that was old enough to kind of justify the sort of medieval Western European fantasy setting that a lot of people play rolling, uh, role playing games in. So there's some really amazing photographs out there when you start um, hunting through Google. <laughs> Um, it's a really great place to just hang out and find some inspiration if you're lost. Google Images has got a lot going for it. So this is the map version that we're doing that doesn't have a ton of detail in it. So what I'm looking for is just to kind of rough in the main places, um, roughly in a scale that is going to work for the client. This is a little bit challenging because a lot of the icons that we're using um, are going to in fact be quite a bit smaller when you're dealing with what they would represent um, for human sight if you were looking at a map that was similarly in scale. But that's kind of one of the things that I love about fantasy map making is you have the option of kind of shifting things so that it meets what you need it to meet um, to properly communicate what you're trying to get across to your viewer. I found doing wild town research really interesting because there were so many different styles of them. Um, I decided to go with a circle because I liked how the circle would kind of mimic this round shape that's going on in the water here with the rivers converging. Because these are samples, I'm doing them quite small. Um, Depending on the size of the map that's being requested, I work as large as 11 by 17. Um, currently, I do everything by hand. I'm trying to teach myself Photoshop and do a little bit more of the digital. Um, but that hasn't become something I'm proficient in yet. Um, I'd like to get to the point where I can work quite large in a digital frame and be able to get an intense level of detail. Because that's really where my heart is happy doing this. Um, 
and then be able to shrink it down to the size that the client is looking for. Um, but that hasn't come about just yet. And we're looking for Harpy Hill now. So Harpy Hill is roughly the same size as Canon Mirror and a similar wall keep. Um, this one is Mott and Bailey, which I'd seen before um, a couple of times, but I'd never known what the name was. I think that's one of my other favorite things about doing um, fantasy mapping for clients is they always have different sources of research than what I've run into. And I really love learning. It's one of my biggest passions. That ellipticals are really messing with me, so we're just going to undo that. Erasers, the original undo. This is what I mean about working so small. Still not loving the shape of that, but the placement is right. So we're looking at denser forest on this side of the river. So one of the ways that you can suggest that is just by giving an outline of the trees. Um, I know that I've asked and most of the trees in this region are pine, so that changes the shape. Um, I've found that it sometimes surprises uh, people when they're commissioning or maps the amount of detail that I would like when they're giving me that information. Um, it helps me to know like what kind of trees are you thinking of, what kind of water are you looking at, um, be it like moving water or standing water, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of people have thought very very hard about the cultures and the things like that that their stories are taking place in, um, but they haven't necessarily considered all of the intricate details of an environment that might influence the way someone would make a map. Uh, Potato Banana, I hear that you are here with us and someone is watching from Scotland, is that you? Wow, this is kind of blowing my mind right now. Um, the live stream will be available once we've finished, yeah, I'm seeing that that's up here now. Um, my plan is to actually turn these into uh, a weekly thing, possibly more than that if I feel like my nerves go down a little bit. Um, I used to do something called art jams with my best friends when I lived in a bigger city. Uh, we would all get together and we'd bring uh, whatever we were working on um, and we'd just chill out. So if somebody had their guitar and they wanted to practice, they did that. If somebody had sketches they wanted to do, they did that. If somebody wanted to work on their knitting or whatever, the only rule was you had to have a project. You couldn't just come and hang out. And I kind of feel like the live streams for this would be like a version of an art jam for me because I'm living in a place where I don't have too much company right now. How do I decide what angle to use for my places? And once I decide, do I keep the angle the same for all landmarks? Um, with human built settlements, I kind of go with whatever feels right for making the symbols legible to the viewer. Um, when I'm dealing with geography, I tend to choose an angle and keep it consistently. The reason for that is we seem to find more regular patterns in nature because there's things like, for mountains example, uh, tectonic plates in play that kind of create a consistency within the formations. Humans though, humans have a tendency to just kind of <laughs> do whatever they want where they want. It's a very Nietzschean approach to the world. Um, so they can vary. Uh, I try to keep things at least at a similar perspective. So if we're looking down into the keeps, for example, we look down into all of the keeps in the logging camp. There's not one that's suddenly like sketched from the side, like Mario's castle kind of deal. Um, that kind of thing, just to keep some thematic and, and visual consistency. Uh, Myrna just popped up and said, do you import your hand-drawn maps to the digital realm and do any modifications that way? 
At this point, I do not. Um, my maps are 100% hand-drawn uh, from beginning to end at this point. I would like to start doing a bit of digital modification. Um, the biggest thing that I'm really interested in learning how to do is just adding the boxes that I like for the keys of my maps um, onto my maps in a digital way. Um, because that just allows for them to be more cleanly read um, than kind of cramming them in after the fact or even before the fact, but I'm quite frankly, if I'm drawing a personal map, not that good at putting things in at the beginning. Uh, with client maps, I do a lot more work um, laying them out in advance, but if I'm just drawing for myself, I kind of just do it and see where the map takes me, um, which is a lot of fun, but considering that I love to draw and pen the absolute most out of everything, <laughs> doesn't really make for revisions that go all that well. So the forest is staying pretty dense still on this side of the river. I'm going to leave a bit of a clearing here just for some visual interest so that the party has something to explore when they come through. The forest starts to thin out um, on the other two sections. It's quite thin over by Canmere. Uh, so we're going to use a little bit of it to transition from town to nature and kind of give adventurers the idea that we're moving into civilized lands from the wild. Um, there aren't a lot of roads on this map, which I found really interesting because you have fairly well-developed civilizations um, that are going on in this area in terms of like individual keeps and such. Um, and it's kind of interesting to me that they're not necessarily connected but at the same time it makes sense because if you look at the more feudal eras that a lot of these rpgs are based on you're dealing with um, decentralized governments so a guaranteed system of like road networks um, is not necessarily in place the way it would be when you have systems that get reliable amount of taxes and what have you Uh, Laura says live feed equals art jam for long distance friends. Yeah, that's totally true. That's absolutely true. Um, I encourage you guys, if you've got projects you want to work on, pull them out. Let's do this together because that sounds like a really great plan to me. One of the things that I noticed I'm doing is I'm getting very horizontal with my lines for my trees. So I'm going to deliberately try to break that up a little bit. <clears throat> forest is getting denser down here towards a little stronghold actually it's a good thing I looked down here because I missed that so let's put that in first so a little stronghold uh, was really cool for me because it's a giant tower um, and I'd never drawn anything quite like it before I think my favorite detail that I came up with for this tower are these little windows right here. They remind me of little keyholes, the way they go together. Now we're kind of tripping off the back of the map here, so oh, that's way too short. Bring that up. I promise that I'll work out a better lighting system for the next time. You guys would be amazed to see how MacGyvered this is over here. I was really nervous about doing it, and I realized that if I didn't do it soon, I probably wasn't going to, just because nerves would get the better of me. So, so we're here now, as, as haphazard as it is, um, and next time we'll be better. <laughs> so we've got a few little hills going on in here. It's more hilly up near Harpy Hill as the name would suggest. Alright, so that's an example of what I feel is closer to a lower level of detail. We're dealing mostly with silhouettes of trees. Everything is kind of rough. Um, these kind of maps are actually really fun as travelers maps, like one that you'd think a character in your game perhaps could have drawn um, because the great thing about character maps is that they can be cl much closer to a representation as opposed to something like a geographic map where you're relying on that information to navigate 
So we'll kind of smooth in the river here a little bit more. Just to give us a bit more visual here. I also like that this section of the map has a really strong asymmetrical triangle thing going on. It's pretty cool. I'm not sure how the confluence works though. On the final map I'm going to have to do a bit more research on on how a river would split that way. This is almost exactly the proportions of what I was given on the original map. Um, and I'm I'm bound to try and be as faithful to that original map's proportions as I can be, unless the client has said to me, hey, I know that there's certain issues with um, the geographic realism of this thing. Would you be willing to kind of fill in the gaps for me with that? Not that I'm an expert by any way, shape, or form. Uh, Myrna's saying give us a close-up, so let's see if I can do that effectively. Haha, <laughs> that's working. So like I can, you can see it's really rough. Um, there's not a ton of detail going on in there right now, but it's giving you the shape of the place, right? And that's, that's the goal of what we're up to. So one of the ways that I switch between lower detail and higher detail when I'm doing progressives for the map um, is I'll actually go to my printer, which is not in this room, uh, it's downstairs, and I'll photocopy the section that I'm working on, and then I'll start to add detail on top of that photocopy because that preserves quite faithfully the original drawing underneath um, and allows me to agitate the thing. Yeah, Potato Banana, I think you're completely right here. Um, that's not something that we've discussed, the map maker and I. Um, but yeah, it's entirely possible that the rivers are the networks here instead of the roads. And yeah, <laughs> a pirate-esque uh, hodgepodge offshore, offshore city. So the map that I showed you that's mine that I was working on earlier um, is the pirate city in the world that I'm building. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot of boats and there's a lot of barges and there's like an in-the-water market like what you might see in Southeast Asia. Um, I love the idea of the repurposed metal and wood because I see people as being a lot more particular about resources and salvaging uh, when you don't have like guaranteed access to a Canadian supply of softwood lumber, for example. So we're going to move on to the second map here. This one's going to have more moderate detail. Mm. I think I need this extended a bit. And I also think I'm just wrong in my proportions. Probably because I started from that side. It's funny because when you draw for a long time, you'll get kind of used to patterns of how you know you fill a page. Um, and if you kind of deviate from that, you can end up pretty goofed up. I've learned that about myself over time. So one of the things that I do when I'm doing a more realistic version is just to try and make sure that the shape of the rivers and the water is a bit more uh, refined. So it'll be less general than what was going on in the previous map. That's an unusual narrow up there. That shouldn't be happening. Where's my pencil? This is my favorite eraser, by the way. It is so cool. I don't know if it's in focus. Um, this curly part comes off to make the tip longer, and it's just super dandy for little stuff when a kneaded eraser doesn't work as well, or the big white one is going to take off more than you want. Um, I guess for live stream purposes, it'll also be super handy for kind of keeping more objects out of the way of the camera. Now we're looking for a bit more development with the houses. So I know we have four, and I know that they are not quite up against that tree line, so we're going to sketch those in first. Yeah, those lines are going to drive me nuts too. Do -do -do. And that 
it's too wide now compared to what I've got. I want a close-up, right? Because you can fit more detail into a close-up than you can with this kind of far view that I've got. So maybe... Maybe let's swap to pen for a bit because I can get a finer point with my pen than I can with my pencil. So when I'm doing... Oh, come on now, pen. Don't be like that. So when I'm doing pine trees, it's honestly not difficult. It's just repetitive. Um, find your your trunk and then just pull down like arrow fletching around it. So when I'm doing a moderate amount of detail, I'm mostly going to create the same kind of shapes as what I was filling in with the minor. Um, and I'm going to just do that to a limited extent. Um, there tends to be a lot of black-white balance in my maps that I have to pay attention to because I'm doing uh, a heavy ink content a lot of the time. Um, but I'm finding that I'm okay with that. Uh, ink is like the first thing that I really started drawing with as a kid because ballpoint pens were cheap and they were everywhere. Um, so that worked out pretty well for me. It does make things a little bit more awkward when I'm not paying attention to my proportions, but these are roughs and that's okay. I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about how Runehammer handles his streams is he's very forgiving of himself when there are mistakes that are being made, uh, which I think is really cool. I think as artists we have a tendency to really get down on ourselves because we think we have to be perfect all the time, particularly if people are watching. And I know I suffer with that. <laughs> That's not a thing I'm really crazy about is trying new things for the first time in public and and having the potential to be embarrassed or to be wrong. So I'm trying to learn more about that as I go along too. So one of the details that we can start adding when we're doing a more detailed map uh, examples we can start adding things that would further tell people what this place is about so the logging camp we can put in uh, stacks of logs for example um, and like these would be huge these would be like redwood sized logs right um, which is why it's important to kind of vary the shape of the trees that you've got going on in the tree line behind it and then you can put in like I drew a couple little stamps, stumps, stamps, goodness, that's not the right word at all. Um, you can put in a stump and then put a little tick coming out of it for an axe, that kind of thing. On the final map, because it will be so much bigger, this is going to have um, doors and chimneys and all kinds of things that go in with that. You can also kind of start filling in a little bit more information about the road that's here, give it a couple stones to set up some texture. And maybe there's individual paths from the main road to each of these quarter shacks. Another wood pile over here, maybe. So we're looking at the same kind of tree line over here as what we did before. And this time I'm going to do more of what I did on the top of kind of filling in a few of the trees here and there to create a sense of volume and a bit more detail. Because we're not doing a heavily, heavily detailed map yet, I'm not going to do all of the trees. Um, it will just be some of them. And sometimes just want to keep them irregular. I know that when I'm drawing too many of these in a row, they all become the same tree. <laughs> because that's what your hand gets used to. Um, so thinking about 
trees that might be leaning over in the forest. Maybe they've been hit by lightning or they've got pine beetle or something like that. Pine beetle. Man, you can tell I'm Canadian. That's a concern for our forests right now. Doing it this way allows you to suggest some elevation changes within the forest as you go. So like this looks like a natural hill or rise, which is pretty great. This part can be really time consuming depending on the level of detail that I get up to. So in a fully, fully detailed map, this would all be very, very dense. Um, and then from there you kind of shade it in using additional lines to create sometimes what looks like almost a velvety texture. Um, I'm sure that it's not translating as well because I'm so far away. Uh, which map are we at? We're at this one. So there's a closer up of what the line work is looking like. Nice and tight. Um, and I'll go back to that my map and kind of give you an idea of what it looks like on a more finished situation. So... For example, oh, that's a little distorted because I'm curving the paper. So, yeah. So is anybody else out there making maps of their own right now? Or just hanging out for fun? What's going on? Is it a cross stitch that has both dolphins and coffee, Laura, or are you cross stitching dolphins while drinking coffee? Because you've just reminded me that I also have coffee. And it's getting cold because distracting, which is acceptable. Quite acceptable.
<laughs> At least I'm not painting and dipping paint into brushes and coffee. No, that was this morning while I was working on the Beholder miniature that I was painting. Um, of course, in fine keeping of tradition, I keep a mug that's full of the water I use to rinse my brushes. Uh, and I had my coffee right beside it. Um, the good news is I wasn't using any leads based paints or cadmiums or anything, so, you know, it didn't taste delicious, but it wasn't going to kill me. So before I get too much further down here, I'm going to want to put in the Dwindling Sepulchre because those are larger trees and they're intended to kind of draw the eye to that particular place and event. When I'm doing larger trees, I have a tendency to just leave them white in the middle because when I'm doing a heavily dense map, um, it makes a lot of sense to have something that in the density um, draws the eye, or I guess the lack of density, as it were. So Sepulchre looks a lot like Storm Doors, um, which I wasn't aware of when I started looking it up. So what this is, is it's an entrance to kind of an underground lair or crypt. Um, so you would go through these little doors here and there'd be a staircase leading you to a giant underground complex. We don't have storm doors like that uh, here, so I was very unfamiliar with them. Uh, thank goodness for Google because yeah, that was a thing. Mm, where are we for forest here? We're going over here again. I'm not really liking how the edge of this one is turning out. Let's see what I can do about that. Sometimes it's just because I go on autopilot and start making lines and forget that I'm making trees.
Alright, so I'm feeling pretty good about the forest over here. Um, put a little bit more detail on these guys. This is going to be a color map, so there will also be color that will help kind of set off what's going on. So one of my favorite ways to make water more realistic is to just kind of let your hand have fun making that line. Kind of rotate your pen as you go. And just let it happen. Shorelines are usually fairly consistent, but they still have miniature amounts of variation based on soil consistency and all kinds of things like that. And especially from a distance, you're not going to see a ton of minutia, just a bit. I think there might be a little island in this nook right here. I'll put that in there. Hmm. Let's go down to Alito Stronghold and do that. Another close-up, for sure. For sure. So for everybody that's new, um, I'll just recap what I'm up to here. I'm working on sample sketches for someone who's commissioned me. So this was the first sketch that we did. Um, and it's a minimum amount of detail. So in the final, I would ink this. Um, the forests would be relatively open. The water wouldn't be super developed. There would be the icons for the specific places that the client has asked for, um, but it would be pretty pretty sketchy. It wouldn't be um, really, really immaculately detailed. The one that we're working on over here is kind of that mid-range of detail. Uh, things are starting to become more defined. Uh, there's a bit more resolution going on with the design elements that kind of beef up the settings for the specific locations that this person is asking for. Um, Things like waterways are becoming a bit less generalized, that kind of thing. Um, I switched over from pencil to pen just because I actually prefer working in pen. And um, was finding that I have a 0.5 uh, pencil and this is a 0.3 pen, so just I can get a finer line with it. Um, I recently bought myself a 0.003 uh, Copic fine liner. It's like drawing with a needle. It's absolutely amazing. I can tell I'm going to bend a million nibs with it though, um, because it is that fine. Luckily with Copics, you can buy uh, new nibs, so you don't have to throw out the pen body. Um, if something does bend or break, you can just replace the piece that's kind of not working for you and carry on. So yeah, I'm going outside of my square here because they're rough squares. It's more important that I have an idea of what needs to happen in terms of the shapes here than strictly adhere to the guide square that I laid out. So there's not as much forest going on on this side of the river. 
do a little bit right here. Let's get that in. And I thank everybody who's being patient with me. Um, this is a whole new experience for trying to draw and pay attention to um, the live stream and stuff. I'm really looking forward to being fluent enough to be able to actually watch the chat myself. But in the meantime, my incredible friend Myrna is monitoring that for me, making sure I don't miss any questions or requests. Um, it is, uh, like I was saying when things were kicking up, a lot like drawing in public. Although it's a little bit different too because usually when I'm drawing in public people will stop me um, to, to have a conversation and I don't really have that option quite the same way um, with this. I think if it was a small enough group it'd be cool to do it with voice chat. Um, I know that there are people who do that on Discord and that sounds pretty neat. Um, but I think it would really depend on the size of the group so that we're not running into problems where people don't feel heard or it's distracting for me. <laughs> um, it's important to me that this stay fun and that I be able to actually still get work done while I'm doing it. I think if this were my map, I would call these the sisters because they're all nice and tidy in a row. So let's put Canmere in here now, shall we? All right, so we're looking at a circular keep, roughly that size. The gates are over here. Get the top wall in over here. And then the path is going to come down. When I was designing Canmere, I was trying to think of how you could represent a city, um, not a large city, without crowding it beyond comprehension uh, in such a small space. And so I thought of like the village square kind of thing, which is kind of a circle in the middle. And then using that to kind of create a radial hub. Um, I can show you guys a close-up of, this is what Canmere will look like closer to the end. Um, there's actually dimensionality with the roofs and stuff like that. And this is the design I chose for Harpy Hill. This was the other option, but I really like the direction that one's facing more. And then the Sepulchre and Alito's Stronghold. So usually when I'm working on this, I'll do up a few, to sometimes a dozen if I'm not satisfied, little icons um, for, for what we're looking for. Um, just trying to find something that I like the flavor of, because that will help me stay interested in the map, and that's always a good thing. <laughs> We'll put a little bit more river in behind Canmere now. River. Trees. Words are good. I can use them. Over here, there's still some more trees hanging out. So let's do that.
I live on an army base and today is graduation day for, I don't know, some group of people. And I can just hear the marching band kick up right now. So, obviously the parade has started. A little surreal to hear that kind of stuff. Looking good for over here. So we'll wiggle the river again. All right, and then we're looking at Harpy Hill. So Harpy Hill is up. Here, it's basically three concentric circles. Sometimes what I really like doing for hills is um, taking a brush tip pen because you can get some really gorgeous line variation from really thin to really thick. That just kind of adds another dimension. I'd like to get to the point where I can do trees with it reliably because I love the brush strokes. Um, but I find if I get too much hand fatigue, like at the end of a long drawing, that I start making my stroke line all the same. And that's kind of a waste of a pen, <laughs> to be honest. But you can do some really cool stuff with them.
so that's feeling pretty good to me. Okay, so let's go on to number three. Let me check my camera here. Oh, hey, that is working. Fabulous. I really hope that I'm not blocking too much as I'm working. I'm sorry that the light's not the best. Mm, plus one for coffee. And so this is going to be really different because I've got wildly different boxes here compared to the last one. So let's just widen those out a bit. Maybe not make them quite so tall. I have a template. Um, which is just a cut piece of cardboard that gives me a proper 4x4 four four square. Um, but I seem to have misplaced it this morning. Which is kind of Murphy's Law any day that you want to try something new, right? So we will just make do with this for now. Sometimes it's really easy to get hung up on having the right tool or what have you. And it can become an excuse to not do the work. Um, and I know that I'm sometimes bad for that. Oh, I need to have this thing before I can start this project. I've been trying to push myself to just make do or improvise, honestly. Um, my fabulous little MacGyver setup for my camera rig today is a really good example of that. Alright, so let's get our river in here, shall we? Oh, that's really jagged. That's okay. We'll live. Again with the jagged. And that's really low. That's alright, we can adjust. We will just work farther down, that's all. Logging camp. Mm, what are we doing with you? I think we're in at a well this time around. So, houses. Oh man, suddenly I cannot draw roof lines to save my life. That's okay.
And there's a little bit more detail happening with the logging camp. Kind of giving it a bit more of an impression of existing. So it's 10.40 now, um, I'm probably going to sign off here in about the next 5 or 10 minutes. Uh, this has been a lot less stressful <laughs> on the other side of it than I was expecting it to be. Um, so I really appreciate that you were willing to kind of stop your day and hang out with me for a bit. Um, I'm going to start doing this regularly on Thursdays. Um, we may do more of them if it works out well for people. and. It keeps working well for me. Um, I may not always be working on maps. I may be working on other commissioned art. Um, but I, I intend to always be working. <laughs> so if you've got projects that you want to clear some time in your schedule for, you are more than welcome to come hang out. Um, if you've got stuff you're working on that you want to share with me, feel free to leave a, a picture or a comment. Um, I will check all of the comments once I'm signed off. Uh, I'm going to post this up so that it can be seen once the stream is over. And if you want to get a hold of me at all, uh, my email address is monocledoctopus, all one word, at gmail.com. Lorna, is there anything else that I need to say in terms of announcements? You are the smart one when it comes to all of this. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, Myrna's reminding me to let everyone know that I do have a Patreon. Uh, it's quite new. I'm really excited about it. Uh, it is specifically for uh, fantasy cartography, uh, so map making and fantasy illustration. Uh, so if you are interested, you can come and find me there. Uh, again, the same user handle is monocled octopus. Um, and it would be really delightful to have more people hanging out, um, working on world building stuff. I'm sharing bits and pieces of the world that I'm building for my novel uh, and various art projects that I'm on. And if that's interesting to you, then feel free to come by. I'd love to have you. All right, two more minutes of drawing trees and then I am going to go for the day. And we will do this again next week.
All right, my dears, that's me. So hopefully you have a ton of creative time of your own. Um, just put the pencil to the paper. It doesn't have to be good. It just has to be there. And we'll catch you next week. Bye.